AI can write you a contract. AI is great, can do this, can do that. Don't get AI to write you a contract, honestly. What legs will it stand up in court or anything? I can almost guarantee, because of the political will at the moment, that there will be an end to short-term tendencies. So it will be, fixed-term tendencies will be gone. Do not copy a, a contract because it doesn't fit you. It's got to fit you, it's got to fit your property, it's got to fit your situation. Whether you're at the beginning of your property journey, looking to enter the market, or a seasoned professional seeking new strategies and insights, this podcast is your one-stop resource for all things property investment. Welcome to the Property Investors Network podcast. Let's embark on this exciting journey together and make your property investment dreams a reality. Hello and welcome to today's episode of Property Investors. It's great to have you here. And I am joined by a very special guest today that we have got in to help us with some legal advice. Tony Powell, who is an academic lawyer, is joining us here to talk about the Renters Reform Bill. Great to have you on, Tony. How are you today? Yep, not too bad. Thank you, Mark. Yep. Um, looking forward to it. Um, this is an area that so many questions keep on popping up in the forums. Um, hopefully I'll dispel a few myths. <laughs> hey, good stuff, good stuff. Well, that's the reason, you know, you, you reached out to me and we've had a discussion of things and I just thought it'd be perfect to, to get you on to sort of get rid of these myths. And there's a lot of advice that, so to speak, good advice going out there at the moment that is off the mark. Uh, yes, changes are afoot, are happening, but you know, maybe not as they're not in place just yet. But if you could just tell us a, a bit about your background, Tony, a bit about your good self. Yeah. Um, so I'm a PIM member. Um, I've just, well, just about to start the Mastermind program, Mastermind Virtual 8. Uh, really okay. looking forward to that. Um, I'm an ex-cop. I was a police officer for 16 years, Northumbria, Kent, then back home in Hampshire. Um, for the past 10 years, I've run my own training business and consultancy um, delivering training mostly in the care industry but that led me back down the law line and from that I became an expert witness for uh, civil and criminal courts um, on use of reasonable force that led me to taking my law degree when I was 54 <laughs> I must be mad um, although I did go through university with my son so he'd done criminal gym forensics and I'd done law and we both graduated on the same day in the same ceremony at Canterbury Cathedral which was fantastic um, from there, I became a county court advocate dealing with landlord and tenant repossession hearings. Um, hence, I know contracts and ASTs back to front, sideways, and upside down. Um, which, um, when we joined Penn, has led me to being a speaker on the circuit. And as you've seen my talk, um, uh, have I got contract news for you? Um, from there, I ended up being a sessional coming back to my old university here at Canterbury Christchurch. And uh, I'm now a full member of staff as an academic tutor. Um, it, it's easier to call me an academic lawyer. <laughs> I've also done the bar course as well. Um, so, yeah, um, fully legally trained. I'm regulated by Silex as a, as a paralegal. Um, because of family situations, I decided not to go into practice and become an academic instead. So there we go. That's me in a nutshell. <laughs> I remember when you were doing your law degree as well. The book, the book was huge. You held it up once. You just said, "I'm, I'm working my way through this." <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. The civil procedure rules is literally like that, and there's two volumes of it, and then you've got the criminal procedure rules, which is basically the same. <laughs> <laughs> good stuff. So we know we're in safe hands, which is good and, and what it's all about. Because as, as we say, the rent and reform bill is, is scaring a lot of people. There's still a lot of doubts in it all. So, you know, there's a few things that I'd like to ask you, Tony, just, just to cover off if you could, because, you know, with your finger on the pulse, uh, you know, active speaker on the pin circuit, and of course, helping landlords, investors, uh, anybody out there realistically with their contracts, making sure that they're, you know, getting good advice and doing things in the right manner. It's uh, it's great to be able to have a professional like yourself on with us today. So first and foremost, has the renters reform bill been made law yet? Nowhere near. <laughs> Literally nowhere near. Um, it is still a bill. OK, so when a bill passes through Parliament, you have basically three stages. 
So you have the House of Commons, there's first reading, setting, uh, second reading, committee stage, reading stage, third stage reading. Then it goes to the House of Lords and goes through exactly the same again. And then uh, the final stages of consideration of amendments and then royal assent. So currently the news is that the implementation is going to be pushed back to 2025. Okay, that's the latest indication we've got on that. Um, as with all new laws, okay, there's an implement, the implementation period that is always has to be given to allow standing law to be finished. So uh, there's, like all courts at the moment, county courts have a waiting list. So there are cases waiting to go into county court. So land, landlord and tenant repossession hearings, they are months away from going in. So there has to be a transitory period, and that can be six months to a year. Um, lead in time then of the new law, which is six months. Um, as such, you're looking at a timeline of poss possibly 2027 before anything actually comes in. So it's still a bill. It's nowhere near law. Um, as, as you and I were talking about earlier, one of the things that's brought this into the public mind is um, there are agents out there, estate agents and letting agents, that have got this completely wrong. And they're actually advising landlords at the moment, no, you can't get rid of someone under Section 21 because the law has changed. Here in uh, Kent, an estate agent is about to be taken to court over that because they were charging to advise the landlord or landlords um, what they need to do under the new rules. Um, so they're going to find themselves in court with a very nasty bill. <laughs> so they're worried that they're going to get, 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 get a fine or something because they're doing something wrong. It hasn't actually changed yet. So just keep doing what you're doing. This is what people, I mean, I'm not a professional when it comes to this, but I always say, just keep doing what you're doing until we basically, the law says that you don't do that anymore. You do it this way because yeah. otherwise you're just a law unto yourself for want of a better word, aren't you? And you're just getting yeah. things wrong. And of course, that can be very costly if uh, if you if you start Incredible. trying to act in a way that, like you say, I mean, I didn't know it was going to be twenty twenty five, but as you've gone through it there, so basically they've just announced it, haven't they? And this is what everybody's panicked about: the announcement. It yeah. was very. I know it's not law or anything, but a very similar thing happened with a lot of people I know when when the EPCs and they said we're going to make you know a, a change in the EPCs on buy to lets and everything, and everybody's like, whoa! It's like. It's, that's still no no closer to coming in at yeah. the moment. That keeps getting put back. So don't yeah. panic straight away is basically, I think, what we're trying to say here. Uh, yeah. And what you explained there is brilliant. Absolutely. And also, it's uh, the whim of political will at the moment. I will be, I'm not I'm trying desperately not to be political here, but this is yet another populist um, piece of legislation that they're looking to push through. Um, Unfortunately, the Conservative Party do have a, a long history of populist um, piece of legislation going through. And what happens with populist stuff is it sits very uncomfortably with standing law. So you end up in a situation where there's lots of challenges, lots of loopholes, and it causes more problems until such time as the Secretary of State releases guidance as to what the new law actually means and the definitions within it. So if you look through the bill, there's a lot of stuff there that isn't defined. Mm. You know, they sort of say about unreasonable um, length of time or unreasonable if they're refusing pets. They haven't defined what unreasonable looks like. So, you know, you can't enforce a law that hasn't got a definition. Well, no, it's a grey line. It's because what's unreasonable to you might not be unreasonable to me. So, exactly. as you say. Now, one of the questions, just as you on the political side of it, if we have a general election, obviously in the time frame that this is going to take, we're, we're going to have a general election, aren't we? Will, will that change? Could, could it change everything? Um, potentially, yes. However, across government, so across the, the, the House, there is a, a will to reform housing. And unfortunately, rental is going to be part of that. Um, so there are things that are likely to stay. So Section 21 being abolished, yeah, I, I can see that happening, most definitely. Um, grounds for possession under Section 8, 
if they're going to take away uh, Section 21, they've got to do something with Section 8 to reinforce it. They've got to. Okay, so things will happen there. I can almost guarantee, because of the political will at the moment, that there will be an end to short-term tenancies. So it will be fixed-term tenancies will be gone. Okay, how that's going to look for essays and student accommodation, no one actually knows because they haven't actually addressed it in the bill. There, there's little references to it, but nothing has been defined. Um, keeping a pet, that's going to come in. <laughs> it, that's been pushed for for decades. It, and I think the government is going to fold on that and let that one happen. However, um, in a in a proposed change to the Tenant Fees Act, um, it may be a case of they must have insurance for that pet. And okay. it's the type of insurance that will cover damage, etc. Um, the decent home standard. Hot political potato at the moment. And um, yes, the, the housing secretary at the moment, Mr. Gove. Um, for some reason, a quote of his has been um, tacked on to private rental when actually what he was talking about was um, after the ITV news investigation and the houses are, are covered in mould and damp and all this, um, his quote to an answer to that has been attached to the Renters' Reform Bill. So it's paint, uh, tarring us um, as property investors and landlords with the same brush as these really horrendous um, housing associations. There is a lot of issues around that. Um, the landlord portal and the land, landlord ombudsman, um, they're, they're going to come in. Um, even Labour have been talking about this. Is it an issue? Not really. Regulates the, the sector a little bit more, and I can't really see there being too many problems there. You already have letting agents who were signed up to the redress schemes. And a lot of the landlords I know are signed up to the private redress schemes anyway. It's just formalizing that process um how rents are reviewed and increase in notice periods so even though that seems to be a, the bulk of the renters reform bill i believe they will come in at some point irrespective of which party is actually in government okay okay so with regards to like rent rises mm -hmm. what do you think they're going to cap them um yeah, I think they've made a, made a bit of a pig's ear of this, <laughs> if I'm honest. Um, so, whether they're going to cap them or not, Labour are talking about a cap. Conservatives aren't at the moment. Um, but they're saying you can only increase once a year. Yeah. So, if they're going to cap it, they're going to have to increase that cap either yearly or bi-yearly, which is a lot of administration for a government to do. Because right. then they have to judge the market standards. Um, then it, there would be a drive for individuals. But following what the Conservatives are talking about in the bill, it does make me concerned. Because you've got landlords that haven't raised their rent in ages. You know, they've got damn good tenants. They've been there for decades, some of them. And now you're going to get these landlords that, for whatever reason, hasn't, haven't raised their rents so that they don't trigger the appeal system for a sudden increase in rent, they're going to start putting their rents up. And if they put their rents up, it's going to make other people put their rents up. So you're going to end up in a spiral which is absolutely counter to what the government supposedly want. So, again, the, this bit of um, rent increases, I'm... I'm looking and I cannot find anything at the moment that actually defines it and defines how they're going to do it. Like I say, Labour are talking about a cap, but I can't see that as being workable. And the system that um, the Conservative government are currently talking about, again, it has issues and it's going to need work. I can guarantee when it hits the House of Lords for its first reading, and quite a lot of the Lords, by the way, are landlords, <laughs> It's going to get bounced back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, it makes sense, makes sense. Uh, I mean, 
areas as well, because obviously rents in London to the rents up north are completely different. So you could cap it somewhere, you could say percentages, but it's still never going to be quite the same, is it? Uh, no. I just think at the end of the day, it just needs to be sensibly monitored. Yeah. Um, and, you know. And unfortunately, yeah, unfortunately, one of the things that we, we've all seen happen is um, because governments in London, um, laws become London centric. And so if they start designing the cap around what's happening in London, like you say, you start going up north or West Country, Wales. Yeah, it's it's not going to work. No, so, no. again, you know, it's it's whole fire because there will be legal challenges to these as well as um, it going through the committee stages, etc. So I cannot see the bill actually coming out in the form that it's been released as at the moment. So, well, that just leads me on to another one. It's like saying, well, which of the elements do we think, you know, are going to stick around, are going to stand, you know, which ones have you read in your opinion, so to speak? And a lot of this is down to, to opinion. It's down to the facts oh. of what we're reading now, of course, as well. It, it, just put yeah. that out there. But it, um, and that's why I love these sort of conversations and debates and things like that as well. But it's like looking at the elements. Of the bill. When I was listening to the board. Oh. Yep. All right. I'm just getting some... Uh, feedback on my end yeah no um yeah when i was uh re listening to the bill and, and it was all being read out i just thought to myself there's some elements there i can't even see them actually incorporating and bringing those in no um having been someone who argues for um possession in court um well i mentioned about ground eight okay so, uh, section eight you know grounds like 10 11 12 etc um the, those grounds of possession, in a way, have needed a little bit of adjustment for a few years now. So I'm hoping that this will prompt um, a more suitable adjustment to Section 8 and the, the grounds coming in. Um, like I said, section removal of Section 21, I think that's an absolute. I think that's gone, um, which ties in with the um, tenancy periods as well. But what I can see coming in is um, landlords moving into a rental property. Currently, if you say it's your home, the landlord may move in and you know evict the tenant under certain grounds. And that's got to be their permanent home. I can see that changing. And what they're proposing is saying it can be a close relative. So son, daughter, aunt, uncle. So if there is a family need for that home to be taken back in, then that I can see being uh, allowed through Section 8. Um, rental arrears. So we already have ground date for rental arrears. However, they're talking about changing that and also including any amount of arrears, which falls into grounds 10 and 11 as well. How that's going to fit with each other, I don't know. Um, I wish they wouldn't muck around with ground eight because that's a, a standard one there. So two months in arrears or eight weeks in arrears triggers ground eight, section eight, and you can do uh, possession hearings on that. Ground eight is um, mandatory, a mandatory ground. So they're looking at making more of the grounds mandatory rather than discretionary under the um, for the district judge. Um, selling a rental property. Um, the current mortgage possession grounds, I understand, will remain um, with new grounds created for circumstances where they wish to sell. Um, again, these grounds haven't been finalised yet. Um, and social behaviour, there. So, ground fourteen, if memory serves, uh, serves me correct. The notice period with that, for that is going to be shortened to two weeks. And what they're looking at is um, having more power to evict them and quicker. My problem there is if you look at the um, county court bailiff situation, you're looking at three months before you can get an appointment with a court bailiff. So literally just over the road behind me is uh, Canterbury County Court. 
their waiting time at the moment just in Canterbury is four months on average. So you may get a forthwith possession order in court, which means now nothing's happening for four months because the bailiffs ain't going to go. <laughs> so they're talking about making the antisocial behaviour as one they really want to uh, get a grip of until they sort out the bailiff situation and put more staff in courts and open more courts there's no way they can get that to work but i can guarantee that will be sledgehammered in because that fits into the political will of other things about uh, rights etc um the end of fixed term tenancy agreements absolutely that's going to go um although this does work in other areas and up in scotland for example it's quite strange um the fixed tenancy period has gone and it seems to be working fine now there seems to be a lot of um suggestion that it could be um that the tenants don't want the complexity of moving and resetting up things so you're finding that you're getting very good long-term tenants um but conversely so many people are so used to that fixed period they are still treating the unfixed period as a fixed period tenancy so they're giving notice as if they would on a fixed you know on an ast so scotland is bimbling along quite happily with that and there don't seem to be many issues so those elements i can see remaining and like i say section 21 absolutely um but just on that i can tell you as someone who's been in court for the, the possession hearings um i would say section 21s would form approximately about six percent of possessions nationally so a lot of people are worried about it and yes i can understand it seems like a fundamental tool being taken away from you as a landlord um but if they bring in some more of these more powerful section eight areas then you're still going to have the ability to remove a pain in the backside tenant um as you know from your training you know the vetting of tenants is absolutely you know top of your list make sure you get the right tenants in, in the first place um but things happen you get you know things happen with tenants and you know as i've said to many a landlord have a conversation with your tenant mm -hmm. you know to save you even getting anywhere near court just have a conversation with them you know you may find that the whole situation can actually be resolved um but like i say around about six percent of possession hearings are under section 21 or an accelerated section 21 an accelerated section 21 is one where you don't go for the money as well yeah well, I think a lot of people have said to me, Section 21 abolished. Are you are you worried? Are you? I've said, no, not really. I've said, because I've never. All right. Maybe if you need to take the property back, I haven't needed to do that. But I've never wanted to evict a good tenant. You know, somebody that's paying, that's not causing a mischief, that's doing doing what they, you know, just living in the property. I don't yeah. want to evict. So I'm not using Section 21s. Do you know what I mean? But like yeah. you say, there's going to be some things that are put in there for Section 8. Uh, which we hope anyway, which will maybe even potentially make it better and, and easier to yeah. remove people if they are problems and stuff like that. Now, with the ASTs, getting rid of the ASTs and going into, I mean, is, is that along the lines very much of just having, like like when an AST runs out, it's just almost like a rolling contract, isn't it? Yeah. And this is, this is what annoys me about our lovely press. <laughs> they really banged on about this. Um, it's appeared in quite a few papers most tenancies are on periodics anyway yeah so they're a rolling um tenancy agreement and you still have your usual rights to get someone out of the property follow the right process with the right notice and a lot of the tenants now i know a lot of people have experienced local councils saying no we're not going to do anything until you've got that eviction notice no, we're not going to do anything until the bailiff's on the door. Um, yeah, makes things a bit awkward. But at the end of the day, when the bailiff turns up, they've got to go. And, mm. you know, if you've got a good enough ground, and it's all about the proof and good enough grounds to go to a court. 
And yes, you get some wily tenants that know the law and will push it to just, you know, that's whisker of actually breaking the, the contract. They're, they're awkward tenants anyway. And even now they're awkward to get rid of. That's not going to change under the Renters Reform Bill. No. They are still going to be awkward tenants that are going to be awkward to get rid of. But um, a statistic that I saw the other day, only 2%, um, apparently, from landlords that have been surveyed, only 2% out nationally of tenants fall into that bracket. And one of the biggest culprits is a program which is nightmare tenants and slum landlords. Whoever put that on the telly deserves shooting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that pushes a lot of myths that are out there, um, which is a bit disconcerting. Well, it always is. I mean, there's always something that goes out there. I mean, we always seem to be tarnished with a with a sour brush, if you like. Uh, and even if you're doing the job correctly, you're still, you know, looked at as a scumbag landlord or something like that. Because that's the way that everybody's portrayed. The press never come out and say, oh, these landlords are doing a great job, giving great, great living to, to their tenants. Their tenants are loving it. You know, they've they got pizza nights. They've got all of this. They, we always look for the problems, don't we? Because that's what, that's what fills up the news. And I yeah. think with the Renters Reform Bill, and it's been great that you've been able to go through some of these things with us. It is everybody's just taking the negatives. What could go wrong with this? What could go wrong with that? Rather than actually, I look at it and I think to myself, I think there's a few positives there that actually, yeah. you know, maybe did need tweaking, maybe did need changing. Um, yeah. And, and you know, let's see what's going to happen here. I, I, I always, you know, ha, is the glass half empty or half full sort of thing? I like to see it. It's, you know, it's half full at the moment. We can put some yeah. more in there. There's some positives to be had. Um, yeah. and, and it could really work in our favour. It could almost, you know, so to speak, sort out a very dated system that does need a bit of a kick up the backside. Yeah, and I agree. From someone who's been at the sharp end of you know the repossession hearing, there are elements of um, you know the land, tenant and landlord act that need tweaking. You know, mm -hmm. there are elements that are just you know <laughs> admin heavy. So if they can strip that back, which reading the bill, it appears that they are trying to get to. Um, is it the, the finished article? Nowhere near. Um, is it going to be challenged? Yes. Is it going to get bounced back from the Lords? Absolutely. And like I say, you know, you've got landlords in the Lords that are not going to want to see this come through. So it will eventually get through in some way, shape or form. Um, it is a beast of political will. It's a piece of, if you like, populist legislation. One of the best ways to deal with it, have <laughs> the tenancy contracts nice and tight. Have them fit for purpose. Do not copy <laughs> a contract because it doesn't fit you. It's got to fit you. It's got to fit your property. It's got to fit your situation. And it's got to fit current standing law. You have a nice tight contract, and yeah, you're going to find that it's a, you know a lot easier to do the nasty stuff as well as the good stuff. Yeah, definitely. Well, I remember us chatting once. They used to sell, didn't they, AST contracts in uh, W. H. Smiths. Oh. <laughs> um, I one of the last cases I done. This guy had a copy and pasted from the internet. Um, and I took over from another um, county court advocate um, who unfortunately got taken ill. And so I literally picked up the papers on the court steps. And I literally froze when I got to the AST. Uh, it was different type fonts. It <laughs> And I had to hand a copy of this to the uh, district judge. And unfortunately, this is a district judge that I know um, and have had a few arguments with in court. Handed in this, and he just looked at me and literally over the top of his glasses, really, Mr. Power? Like, oh, hell. <laughs> the last bit of the AST was from France. <laughs> oh, no way. No way. Honestly. Yeah. And that's I, why you get... Go on, sorry. I was going to say, I've got a fairly good record of um, getting possessions. Guess what? I didn't get that one. 
Not that day. That day, that one wasn't working. I mean, uh, yeah, it, it's crazy. And I, I also, a caveat to that, I would say, is be careful of AI contracts as well, because people are now, AI can write you a contract. AI is great, can do this, can do that. Don't get AI to write you a contract, honestly. What legs will it stand up in court or anything? You know, artificial intelligence is there. It has a purpose. It's not your financial advisor. It's not, you know, it's not going to be, um, it's going to not going to turn up at court and, and stand in your defense to say this should stand up here in court. So please, please, please make sure you're reaching out to the specialists that can help you with this. And of course, as Tony touched on as well, he does speak on the pin circuit. He goes around to local pin meetings, has a fantastic presentation uh, about contracts, about law, about things that we don't know uh, as much to, you know, a lot of it's scary. But again, if you get this drawn up and you know what you're doing, and I always say you don't need to be a specialist in all departments. You could be a property investor specialist. But to speak to people who are specialists in their niches to work with you to be a part of your power team. Um, and, yeah, it's, it's been absolutely brilliant, actually, Tony, to have you on. Have you got anything that you'd like to uh, like to say before we wrap this one up? Yeah, just as you quite rightly say, reach out to the specialists. Law is something that is there to help you. OK, but if you get it wrong, it will bite you. <laughs> um yeah, so, by the way, there's things called cost orders that happen in um, landlord and tenant repossession hearings as well. You don't want to be walking out of court with a six-figure cost order against you. Get it right, speak to the specialists. <laughs> yeah, well, that's it. that's it. If you go in there trying to get a lo recoup a load of money and it actually the tables get turned and you end up having to spend more, can't you? Uh, there's loads of different things on that. So, yes, yeah, speak to the specialists at the beginning. Don't also don't wait until it's too late and then say, hang on a minute, I need to speak to a specialist because I'm not sure my contracts are in order. That's too late. Start from the beginning. Be the property professional that we set out to do to be. Uh, and and no, it's been it's been great to see you, Tony. Uh, our paths always cross. I always enjoy our conversations. Uh, and if anybody wants to reach out to you uh, for any help and support with contracts or legal advice or anything like that that you do offer, uh, what's the best ways to reach you? Um, yeah, um, you can. Message me on the Facebook page. Um, I'm on the PIN Community Network and on uh, Mastermind uh, 34 Facebook page as well. Um, yeah, reach out to me. Do a DM to me. And, yeah, if if I can help in any way, shape or form, I will do. Um, I do have to quickly point out I'm not a solicitor. I'm not a barrister. I'm an academic lawyer. So there's only a certain level I, I can go to. But I'm very, very well connected in the legal world and I can uh, signpost you as necessary. Brilliant. Brilliant. Good stuff. Good stuff. That is Tony Power. So do do connect with him anyway, because he's a great guy and he always offers helpful advice. I see some fantastic posts in the pin community as well. So as breaking news comes through, it'd be great to get you back on again in the, in the future, Tony, to, to go over what, whatever is changing or whatever is being put there. So it would be great. We'll, we'll get you back. We'll get you back in and uh, we'll pick your brains again. Not so I hope you have enjoyed this episode today. I hope, um, you know, it's given you major value. It's also given you a bit of peace of mind with the renters reform bill that's out there. And of course, if you've enjoyed this or if you think, you know, I know some friends that are really worried about this, please feel free to share this episode, to share this video in any form that you have. Feel free to comment on it. And of course, if you have any questions, do reach out to us in the PIN community, the PIN Facebook community, and Tony will jump on those questions and help you any which way you can, as will I. So it's been great to have you joining us here today. I look forward to you joining me in the next episode, and I'll talk to you all very, very soon. Bye for now. Cheers. Thank you for tuning in to the Property Investors Network podcast. Remember, investing in property is not just about numbers and profits, but also about building communities and creating a lasting impact. You can do this by checking out our website at pinfurtherlearning.co.uk. And of course, look to book onto your local property investors networking event. We are here to help and support you every step of the way, and I look forward to you joining me very soon. Bye for now.